Let's now consider a different case. So let's suppose we have these two curves that we want to find the area between. It's a little bit harder here to define a top and a bottom, but we can define a left and a right. And in this case, if I call my intersection points C and D on the y-axis, I can do this by integrating from C to D of f of y minus g of y dy, where in this case, we need f of y to be greater than or equal to g of y. So f of y will be my right function, and g of y will be the left. So whenever I'm dealing with these, I have to make sure my equation is in terms of y, which usually means solving for x first. So let's do this example. I can graph these. It's the square root of x and x squared. I know my intersection points are 0 and 1, and I know that it's true for both the x and the y axis. In order to do this with respect to y, I do need to solve for y. So my first equation, if I square both sides, I get y squared is equal to x. My second equation, taking the square root, would be the square root of y is equal to x. And we only need to take the positive square root since we're only dealing with positive numbers here. So in this case, the function on the right is this one over here, this second one, which was my square root of y. The function on the left is my y squared dy. Adding 1 to the exponent and dividing gives me 2 thirds y to the 3 halves minus 1 third y cubed going between 0 and 1. Sticking in 1 gives me 2 thirds minus 1 third, which is an area of 1 third. Next, we'll look at y equal to x plus 1 and y equal to plus or minus 3 minus the square root of x. And we can see the graph here. This is one case where it would be particularly nice to use y instead of x because of this second function where we have to deal with a plus and a minus. So if I try to solve the first one for x, I get that y minus 1 is equal to x. My second one, I can square both sides. And then solving would give me that x is equal to 3 minus y squared. So that does give me my functions. I know this 3 minus y squared is on the right. And then the y minus 1 is on the left. I do also need to know my intersection points here. So that is the next important step. Now that I have these functions, I can set them equal to each other. 3 minus y squared equal to y minus 1. Getting everything on the same side, I would have y squared plus y minus 4. So you can see that the intersection points may not necessarily be nice here since we can't actually factor this. However, that's okay. Let's do this without knowing our intersection points and then we can solve for those later and stick them in. So once I distribute my negative signs, I would end up with 4 minus y squared minus y. So this would be 4y minus 1 third y cubed minus 1 half y squared. And we do need to evaluate this from our intersection points. We're not actually going to do that here since these, like I said, these are very nasty. You would need to use the quadratic formula to solve for them. However, it's not too difficult to do and then stick them back in if you're using some kind of computer software. One last example. So we have the graph here and these are already solved in terms of x. So we just need to find our intersection points. So I have 10 minus y squared is equal to, and if I multiply out the second function, I have y squared minus 4y plus 4. Getting everything on one side would give me 2y squared minus 4y minus 6. 
And if I try to factor this, I would end up with two times y minus three, y plus one. So my intersection points are three and negative one. The one on the right is the 10 minus y squared minus, and once again, we do wanna keep this multiplied out. So this was y squared minus four y plus four dy. Once I distribute my negative signs, I end up with six minus two y squared plus four y dy. So this becomes six y minus two thirds y cubed plus two y squared going between negative one and three. Evaluating at three, three times six is 18, three cubed is 27 times two third is 18 and then two squared is nine times two is 18. If I stick in negative one, I get negative six plus two thirds plus two. And this gives me an area of 64 over three.